Hello and welcome to Let's Play Twisted Metal. Yes, the very first one. Developed by Single Track in 1995, the second game they ever made after Warhawk. Now I know this is a pretty ridiculous thing to be trying to show off in the year 2019, but hell, Sony tried to sell you this game last year as part of the PlayStation Classic, so I'm justified, I guess. All you really need to know is that I am doing the first two games as groundwork for an upcoming Let's Play of Twisted Metal head-on. So you can safely skip these if they're too ugly for you. Tune in for the main event when I get to it shortly. But for now, let's get into the history of the first Twisted Metal game. Which we mostly know at this point, it's common gaming knowledge. But the Twisted Metal contest takes place in the far-off year of 2005 on Christmas Eve. Presumably every Christmas Eve, this is a Christmas tradition, this murder contest. The winner of which will receive any prize they desire. The hideous visage in the background is that of Calypso, who runs the Twisted Metal contest. He had his face, and only his face, horribly burned in a car accident. And now he has genie powers and a sadistic streak. No word on how he has genie powers, but the game has some theories on how that came to be. We'll get to those later. We'll also get into why a live-action actor got into this elaborate and disgusting costume just to be the backdrop for a text scroll. A lot of stuff was cut from this game, and honestly I think it's more interesting than the game itself. Even if you've had the misfortune of playing this game, you've barely scratched the surface of what went into this thing. So these are our contestants. These are all the characters who started out in the very original incarnation of the game. Which by the way, in the story of the game, is the 10th annual Twisted Metal competition. So, a lot of classic characters we're seeing, and some we haven't seen very often since this game. One of them never saw another game after this, but uh, we're going for the character who is the most iconic, Needles Kane. And boy, his info screen is, uh, well, graphic design was somebody's passion. He's an escaped mental patient, and he's on a mission to recover his best friend. His special weapon is called the Napalm Cone. It's a actual ice cream cone that's on fire, but it's got a five-star ranking as a special weapon, so it must be good. And everything else is baseline except for his armor. So we'll see how that works out in this first level, which is a one-on-one -on -one battle, which is actually kind of a cool idea. I think more Twisted Metal games could actually get away with this. It's a good intro. Less of a good intro is what we're seeing. This is the main problem with Twisted Metal 1. It's hideous to behold. It is a very, very hard to look at game. But here's Calypso. He set up a nice poster of himself. He does not look like David Bowie, unlike what he'd like us to think. Maybe that's his wish, but he's not competing in the tournament, so he can't win. Oh well. And we got a bunch of posters of all our characters. Sweet Tooth and Crimson Fury, right next to each other, by coincidence. Mr. Grimm's slogan, Live to Ride, Ride to Kill. And Pit Viper, most beloved character in the entire franchise, I believe. Pit Viper is the one character who only exists in this game and nowhere else. But that's all the posters, let's, uh, let's get to battling Crimson Fury. He's at full health. Let's see what we can do about that. He is at one-third health, he's dead. Because of bad hitboxes, collisions can outdamage anything else in this game. And as such, armor is the god stat. If you don't have armor, you can be, well, two-shot, like uh, Crimson Fury just was. So onward to an actual level, rather than that little introduction. This game has a total of six levels, including the arena. I'll be covering multiple levels per video to get this thing over with as soon as possible. And there are 12 characters in this game. 
So I'm going to be doing my gimmick that I established in Twisted Metal Black of showing off one ending per video, but that still won't be anywhere near all of the endings. Anyway, this level we got here is a very simple, small city grid. And the people we've been killing are called refs. They are actually armed and will attack us. They're not simple uh, civilians. But uh, this game is a huge ripoff of Carmageddon. They basically just removed the artifice of it even being potentially a racing game. So we'll be splattering innocent civilians in no time. Uh-oh, dog in the street. We can't hurt the dog. Don't be ridiculous. That dog is invincible. So just pet him one more time and off to a recharge station. It covers about half health per usage and it'll eventually regenerate. It's on a timer. Those are the only means of healing in this entire game. There are no health pickups. They weren't invented yet. The nice thing about that is it means enemies are completely incapable of healing. Any damage we do is permanent. So if you do sacrifice yourself in heavily damaging an opponent, it is worth it. Another thing that wasn't invented yet was energy moves. So we just shot a freeze missile that was a pickup that we collected earlier. Uh, rear firing is impossible except with specific weapons that can only be rear fired. Mines, those are also a pickup. I'm dropping them right now. They actually do considerable damage. They really wrecked a yellow jacket who was uh, following me. But it didn't save me in the end. Dark side finished me off. Respawn at the starting point. You always respawn in the same spot. Off in the distance, you can see a 2D nuclear power plant sort of thing. Polluting the air. Oh, there's one on the other side as well. What do you know? We're surrounded by nuclear power. Probably meant to be some shallow satire about LA pollution because this entire game takes place in Los Angeles. There's a spectacular finale for Darkseid, who has the god stat and is coming back in the next level. So it can be quite a challenge to deal with. Now we're getting to our first like real level. It's got enough enemies that it can't be completed in under a minute or two. And it takes place on a freeway. And this is explicitly in the manual, a satire of LA drive-by shootings, which were a big joke in the 90s for some reason. This will be our final level for the video. And it's just a big loop. Easier to get away from the enemies than uh, previous levels, but not much to see. There's no on-ramps or off-ramps, but there are pit stops where we can hit recharge stations. There's two of these out on the main drag. For some reason, there are a lot of parked cars out on the freeway. Most of them have pickups inside if you destroy them. Often, some of the better pickups. Usually, these little uh, pink hemispheres that are all over the place. The ones that are just lying around, they tend to have terrible pickups. In fact, most of the pickups in this game are useless and were not carried on into future Twisted Metal games. Now, herein lies the serious problem of the first game. I, I'm almost positive I've said that before about the graphics, but here's the main problem with the gameplay, I guess. When we started back in the arena, we had two extra lives to spare indicated by the green dots next to the health bar on the right. Now, when we died in the warehouse district, the last level, we lost one of those green dots. And when we continued on to the freeway, we did not recover it. Those life losses are permanent. You have three lives to complete the entire game. And you cannot save the game. There are no saves in the first Twisted Metal. 
you have to use the passwords that are provided upon completion of every level. And if you do use the passwords, you do get your lives refilled. Also, there is no zeroth life, so if I take any tiny bit of damage right there, I lose, and it's game over. And if I empty out this health bar, it'll be game over. So I'm in a bad situation, and I've got more than half the enemies remaining. That means I have to take it very slow. I can still be aggressive, and I can still crush the smaller enemies with ramming damage if I need to. But I think some of the enemies remaining are the bigger type. So I, I have to run away from them until I can get my health filled back up. And some of the refs have uh, rocket launchers. Those will do a decent chunk of damage if they hit you. Some of the refs have jetpacks. There's one flying down right now. Killed him. They can do a lot of chip damage that adds up surprisingly fast. Turbo is kind of inconvenient in this game. You start out with 20 on a fresh life, and using it, it takes down one per second. Then you can regenerate it by getting turbo pickups, which are just the word turbo in bright red lying around on the environment. But they are very, very scarce. Most levels only have one turbo pickup. So you really don't get to use turbo in this game. You need armor to live, but the armored vehicles tend to be pretty slow and turbo is the only way to make up for that, which you don't have access to. So things can drag out pretty badly. All the pickups besides turbo look pretty much the same. You can sort of tell what's in there once you get really close, but 95% of the time I have no idea what I'm picking up when I grab one of those hemispheres. I have no idea what I got there. Could be anything. And a very minor thing that really annoys me is that when you run out of ammo for a weapon, it doesn't automatically switch to the next weapon that has ammo. It just leaves you with a empty weapon slot. So you have to manually switch to a weapon that does have ammo. Which wastes precious time and divides your focus just a little bit. They fix that in all future games. But the homing missile, if you're familiar with other Twisted Metal games, it's kind of useless in them. It's usually just a way to land reliable chip damage. But in this game, it homes really well and does a ton of damage, so it's one of the best weapons. And speaking of good weapons, we haven't talked much about Sweet Tooth Special, the Napalm Cone. It's one of the better specials. Does a ton of damage, fires in a direct straight line with no homing. But if you land it, it spins the enemy all over the place and sets them up for further attacks. So it is an essential part of the strategy of playing Sweet Tooth and makes him an imbalanced, overpowered character. Single-handedly. That just about wraps this level up. It's as far as I can get without using passwords, so I'll be using passwords for the rest of the game. And it tries to get us to keep going, but no chance. Some other character will have to deal with that. Let's see what happens when you win. It abruptly cuts back to that awful face and another text scroll. Which is a real insult after all the effort gone through to complete this game. But it wasn't supposed to be like this. You see, David Jaffe didn't want to make games. He wanted to be a filmmaker and hoped that video games would springboard his film career. So, his directorial debut was making live-action cutscenes for all of the endings in Twisted Metal. This was supposed to be an FMV game. But at the time of its release, absolutely nobody knew that. Because at the last second, all of the live-action endings were cut and replaced with the best they could do, text over a still image. All of those videos David Jaffe shot remained unseen until 2008. 13 years after this game's release, when Twisted Metal Head-On was ported to the PlayStation 2 with a bunch of bonus features. Among those bonus features are all the original endings. I figured that should be a lot more interesting than what the actual game provided us with. So let's check out Sweet Tooth's Wish.
in glorious live action VHS transferred video. Prepare to be disturbed. Let the winner in. Congratulations! You have won my contest. Welcome to my home. As you know, Mr. K, you are now able, able to claim any prize you request. You just don't know. You don't know what it was like for me. You just... And we just and I... And you... And them... You don't know! Look, I'm a bit confused, Mr. Kane. You do understand, by winning high octane, you are entitled to any request of any value. And yet, you ask me for this? Oh, man. Give me that. Give me! Give me! A paperback? You can't be serious. Oh, man. Down! Down! You get down the street! You... You... You said it would be easy! Do you know what they did? Do you? You? Now it's my turn! It's my world! It's my word! It's my, my turn! It's my day! Boo! Young lady, I owe you a debt of gratitude. You are welcome to stay in my realm for as long as you desire. You guys are both sick. I'm getting out of here, and I'm taking your truck. They've never, as far as I can tell, explicitly stated why all of these endings were cut from the game, but I believe that fact is self-evident upon viewing them. It's not like they were embarrassed of the content of the endings, though. The text version in the finished game is almost identical except for the fact that Needles Kane does not get carjacked by one of his victims at the end. So everything else we saw is canon. Always remember that whenever we see Sweet Tooth driving around, he's got a paper bag as a co-pilot. Or as the text ending names it, Crazy Harold the Wacky Lunch Sack. Ugh. Almost all of the text endings ended up being about the same as the video endings, but I'd like to take a moment to draw some attention to a major exception to that rule. That'd be Yellow Jacket. In the final game, its driver wishes to know the fate of his long-lost son. Who on earth could be the son of Charlie Kane? Well, in a shocking ironic twist, it's Needles Kane and Charlie killed him in the competition. The real shame is that the video version of the Yellow Jacket ending is potentially the single best ending in Twisted Metal history, so I'll be linking that along with this video so you can be the judge. Enjoy.